Okay. Let's get straight into it. Sure. Australia-China relations. Mm. Wang Yi, the foreign minister, said last week they're not mm. competitors, we're not rivals here. Mm. You've come out and said this is our patch, though, when it comes to this region. Those are pretty strong words. And I just think it's a statement of the obvious. I mean, Australia is situated where we are. The Pacific has always been part of the family in which we've lived, and we've always had an incredibly strong relationship. But I was making the point as we sort of step up our engagement in the Pacific that we're going to be working with all partners, um, including China, uh, throughout the region. And I'm, I'm looking forward to having some of those discussions when I when I catch up with the Chinese leaders over the next over the next week or so. Uh, so it is it is a partnership, and we're getting on bu with business with China as well. And uh, this is all to uh, advance prosperity within the region and for that you need stability and, and that's how all, all citizens of the region actually do better. A couple of weeks ago we spoke about what Australia could do to be involved mm. or perhaps to counter the likes of the AIB, uh, the Belt and Road Initiative mm. and you've recently announced this $2 billion infrastructure fund mm. to be rolled out across the region. Is this a sign of a more regionally assertive Australia? No, it's just a sign of us uh, working together with our Pacific family. We've always had strong relationships in, in the region and uh, I've taken the decision, the government has taken the decision to, to uh, enhance those uh, levels of engagement. It's been incredibly well received by, by Pacific leaders and in the meetings I've had, and I'm looking forward to uh, getting together with all of those Pacific leaders when I'm actually up in, in PNG. You're hosting a barbecue. I am hosting right? a barbecue. They're looking <laughs> forward to that, but they're also looking forward to sort of getting together in what is very much a family group and, and talking through the issues that are important to them. Things like our Pacific Labor Scheme, I know is very important. The Seasonal Workers Scheme is very important, um, but also our improving and, and assisting them with their own capability ability development in Fiji or in, uh, in PNG. There is some concern amongst those Pacific leader partners or, or mm. family members, as you like to put it, mm. in terms of getting stuck between a more assertive China, where Australia finds itself, mm. and the fact that, you know, the elephant in the room is that at these ASEAN and APEC summits, the US president won't be there. Well, he's got his reasons for not being there. Vice President Pence will be there, and I think that's highly appropriate. I mean, the, the President is currently over in Europe, and then uh, he's, he's had his midterms. Actually, uh, the VP said, "Don't take it as a snub." He's well, I said don't. That now. Well, I don't think. The, I think he's right. I mean, the Vice President. I'm looking forward to seeing him as well. So, I mean, the US is very engaged in the region, and uh, the, the President will, I'm, I understand, be in G20 down in Buenos Aires. So, there's there's a lot of these meetings on at this time, this part of the year, and Vice President Pence, uh, I, I think, will make a, a very important contribution. How do you rate? Uh, the state of Australian Chinese relations after the foreign minister's visit, after what's been a rocky couple of years? I'd say they're very stable and I welcome that and uh, Australia has always I think sought to be a very productive partner in our comprehensive strategic partnership. That is the official status of the relationship. And I welcome the most recent meetings with our foreign ministers, our trade ministers, and I look forward to the you know the, the engagements we'll have in the, during the summit season in the weeks ahead. I want to get your view on where the sort of lay of the land is with regard to foreign investment, particularly mm. when it comes to a Chinese company or a Chinese linked company. There's mm. been a couple of pretty notable high profile uh, knockbacks. Uh, CK mm. Group's $13 billion bid for the gas pipeline operator. Mm. We've had, of course, the attempts by Huawei, Osgrid uh, in, in building out the, the 5G network. Mm. Is it getting to a point where if you are a Chinese connected company, you're not going to have a very good chance of getting an approval in no, investing not at in all. Australia? I mean, you've, 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 you've highlighted some exceptions, but the normal state of affairs is there's been you know many many approvals um you know, dozens of times over. I mean, it, at least in relation to the APA, I mean, that decision was taken about the um, the concentration and aggregation of, of, of a single owner. Um, it wasn't about, uh, you know, the nationality of the owner at all. And Australia will always make decisions about foreign investment in our national interest, but we will always be the most liberalised foreign investment regime in this part of the world. I mean, you can invest in Australia more so than an Australian can invest in the rest of the region. Um, and so I, I wouldn't describe um, you know, the, the arrangements necessarily is reciprocal, but we have a very open, liberalised investment arrangement. We have clear rules, and I think whether it's on the most recent decision you've referred to or, or, or the others you, you made mention of, we went through a very uh, disciplined process of explaining the decisions, and there were no surprises in those decisions, and I think that's an important mark of what I would like to be, how we continue to engage with China. We, we have our rules, we explain our rules, and, uh, and people can come, and we welcome that investment in accordance with our rules and that is no less than what I'm sure China would expect of any investment in China or, or the 
Singapore would invest, expect in Singapore or Indonesia or Malaysia or, or any other part of the region. But it's no question that Australia's foreign investment arrangements are the most liberal of any in the region. Let me get to this FTA with Indonesia. You flagged before mm. that it will be signed in November. Will it be signed at APEC or ASEAN? Well, I, I, I didn't flag that. I, I, what, I, what I said when I was in Indonesia, it'd be, it was the intention was that trade ministers would be able to deal with that before the end of the year. But look, there's no hurry here. We're not, we're not pressing anything. Uh, Are the, you still the, negotiating? The, no, the negotiations have, have been concluded, but uh, I'll, I'll leave that process to be finalised at the appropriate time. But it would still require ratification in both parliaments. So it's not like it there's a, there's a pressing urgency on this um, and uh, we believe it's a win-win deal we, and we appreciate the very strong support for the arrangement both from President Wadodo but also uh, the support that has come from Sri Mulyani in particular when she was here as a guest of government which I was able to issue when I was Treasurer and uh, of course um, uh, Thomas Limbaugh um, and, and the, the special um, uh, representative when it comes to investment They're not in waiting Indonesia. to see if we're relocating the Israeli embassy. Well Australia doesn't conflate these issues. We, we never conflate these, these issues. And so from our point of view, um, they're, they're very separate issues.